Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon, and I'm your host. Before we get started, please follow us on Twitter at Sense Talk underscore for live t- tweeting updates of the games and, of course, breaking news as well. Please check out our sponsor, SeatGiant.ca. Use the code Sense Talk to get discounts on Sanders tickets. It helps me out. It helps the channel out, and it's a great experience going to a Sanders game. So please, please check SeatGiant.ca out and use the code Sense Talk on discounts for your Sanders tickets. Now, today's game was a special game. It's a part of the NHL Global Series. Tonight's game was in Stockholm, Sweden. W- one of two games the Sanders and Colorado Avalanche will play in Sweden. The next game will be tomorrow at, I believe, 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But right now, Sanders are playing the Avalanche. Crazy, crazy atmosphere. Unique atmosphere because Sweden uh, is not like North America. Um, it's a different type of hockey atmosphere. They... They're much more louder, in my opinion, in Europe. So it's a cool crowd. It's cool to see the amount of Sens fans there are in uh, Europe, especially Sweden. A lot of Sens fans in tonight's game. Let's get it started to the first period we go. Eight minutes in, Neil Yakupov shoots one past Anderson on the power play, assisted by Alex Kerfoot and Colin Wilson, the former Pittsburgh Penguin, one nothing Avs. But 20 seconds later, a nice pass from Hoffman finds Freddie Clayson, who slams a bar down past Semyon Varlamov. His first goal of the year, he does the hands-up selly in his hometown of Stockholm. He scores his first goal of the season, 1-1 tie, assisted by Hoffman and the other Swede, Eric Carlson, the captain. Seven minutes later, Mark Stone deflects a shot from another Swede, Johnny Odia, 2-1 Sanders. Chris Wyman gets a secondary assist. Odia gets an assist. The, the Swedish man, uh, Johnny Odia, gets his first assist. And Stone with his 10th of the year, 2-1 Ottawa. To the second period we go, nine minutes in. Alex Kerfoot, he gets a goal. 2-2 tie on a couple, couple of deflections. Anderson had no chance. Uh, Blake Como and S- Gerard, who was a part of the Duchesne trade, 2-2 tie. Kerfoot, sixth of the year for the NCAA uh, free agency uh, prospect. Four minutes later, though, a shot on net from Dion Phaneuf as Varlamov stops it, but the puck gets loose, and Di Dominico is there to jam in his third of the year, and all of a sudden, all of it's back on the top. It's 3-2 auto assist by Dion Phaneuf and Tom Pyatt. Chris Di Dominico really proving to the doubters, to the scouts, and to the Sanders organization that he belongs in the National Hockey League. To the third period we go. Sanders only allowing four or five shots after the first period for the Avalanche. And all of a sudden, a bad breakdown. Smith and Duchesne collide. McKinnon's wide open. He fans on it, on the shot, but it just goes in. CC doesn't get to McKinnon. Tie game, 3-3. Narantanen and Landon and Skog with the assists. And the Avalanche will force overtime. Both teams get a point, and as usual, the Sens will get at least a point in the first game in a week for the Sanders, but a point to point. Let's see what they can do in overtime. Less than a minute in, after a couple chances for Duchesne and Hoffman, as Hoffman, Duchesne, and Carlson started overtime, which is a deadly starting lineup for overtime, and uh, Duchesne, let's, before we talk about the overtime or shootout results, um, Duchesne, it was his first game as an Ottawa Sander. He looked a little bit rusty. Uh, adjusting to a new team, a little bit nervous, a little bit drained and emotionally tired. It's been a week since the last game they played. His first game was against his former team, and it was in a new surroundings in Sweden. So a lot of uniqueness here. Um, you can see at some parts of the game, Duchesne's skill set, though, creating some nice passes, some nice, almost got a goal on a tip-in from Broussard. Um, Duchesne had a good game, and it'll be sooner than later, uh, Duchesne will eventually get start producing, you can tell. Right away, uh, Duchesne has great puck handling skills and speed, and hope and sooner rather than later, hopefully tomorrow, uh, we will see that progress onto the score sheet. But to overtime we go, less than a minute, and Carlson drops it to Bert- Derek Broussard, who finds Stone on the two-on-one. Stone slams it past Varlamov on the one-timer, and Ottawa wins it in overtime, four to three. A week after losing five-four to the Golden Knights, they defeat the Colorado Avalanche four-three in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, Mark Stone's 11th of the year, second of the night. Ottawa wins it 4-3, to three, and now are 7-3-5 and five on the season. Good for third in the Atlantic Division by a few points. They have a couple games on hand against the Habs, Bruins, uh, the Leafs. I think we're tied with the Leafs now with 19 points. Um, and we have a couple games in hand. So Sanders is getting the points, points, points. And Sens win 4-3. So it's a good game all around. Um, they controlled the pace of the game. And really, this game should not have even went to overtime. If it wasn't for that bad mistake at the end, Sanders probably would have won this in regulation. Bearing a, 
uh, different series of events, but the way the game was progressing, Ottawa had control of the game, but as usual, collapsed in the third. Um, that's another problem. Um, Sanders can't seem to finish the games in regulation as of late, which is going to be a problem because regulation wins are very important. Uh, overtime wins are more exciting, but regulation wins are better uh, for playoff chances and tiebreakers or off uh, regulation wins. Um, shots on goal, 11-9 after the first for the Avs, 12-3 Ottawa after the second, 10-5 Ottawa after the third, 1-0 Ottawa after the fourth or overtime period, 32-19 the final. Craig Anderson had an 842 save percentage. Um, Anderson has looked a little shaky um, the past few games. Now, I'm not this game was a little bit of exception. The first goal, good goal. Second goal, no chance. A deflection. And third goal, defensive breakdown. So this game was not Anderson's fault. That's not what I'm saying. But Craig Anderson, for the most part this season, hasn't been looking like Craig Anderson and hasn't been producing Craig Anderson numbers. Um, that's something to keep an eye on, um, as he has not been looking like himself. And, you know, hopefully the next game he plays, which will probably be November 16th against Ottawa, against Pittsburgh in Ottawa, because um, Condon will start tomorrow for sure. Um, hopefully he can start a turnaround because I believe he has a, nine, a sub 900 save percentage right now and that is, those are not Craig Anderson numbers uh, hopefully we'll see that improve but the team stats right now are 34 faceoff wins for the Sanders 63% Colorado 27, 20 sorry 37 Ottawa was 0 for 2 in the power play um, allowed a penalty shot on one of their uh, power plays Nieto missed high on the glove side of Anderson and the Colorado Avalanche went 1 for 2. Their first goal of the game, Yakupov was on the power play. Hits were 18 26 in favor of the um, uh, Colorado Avalanche. Shots 32 19. The third star of the game and the Sensok YouTube star of the game, Frederick Clayson. He was spectacular tonight, getting a few chances, almost winning the game in the final minute with a wraparound in his hometown of Stockholm, Sweden, playing his first National Hockey League game in front of his uh, family in Sweden, first time, and tomorrow will probably be his last time ever playing in Sweden. In his hometown, Stockholm, he's a star. He really came to the occasion. His first goal of the season was a beauty. He's a Sensok YouTube star of the night and easily the, one of the best the best defensemen on the Sens tonight. Second star was from the Avalanche, Alexander Kerfoot, with the goal and assist, plus one rating, 15 minutes on the ice. And the first star of the game, I would have given him the star, but Clayson was too good not to give to. Mark Stone with two goals, a plus two rating, 22 minutes on the ice. Mark Stone continues to be one of the hottest uh, point Per player so far in the National Hockey League. Stone is on fire and the Sens win 4-3. to three. The game details the Sanders played in Stockholm, Sweden like I've said multiple times and the Ericsson Globe which is a cool kind of arena where it's like a globe. It looks like like, like a planet uh, from the outside. Uh, the attendance was just under 14,000. Um, I don't know if that's a sellout or not. Apparently it is. I saw that on Twitter but some people are also saying it's not. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, there was a lot of empty seats in the 200s but it's not a Sens home game so I could really care less. Um, the crowd, there was a lot of Sens fans there, that's all I care about, and as well, the Sens win, which is all I care about as well. So besides that, Sens win, 4-3 to three in overtime, get the two points, 19 points on the season, 7-3-5 so far on the season. Thank you all for watching. Please follow us on Twitter, at Sensoc underscore, for live stream updates of the games, and of course, breaking news. Please like us on Facebook at Sensoc, add us to your circles on Google Plus at Sensoc, click the big red button down there, subscribe to us. I really appreciate the flow of subscribers as of late and as well the thousands of you that have watched my recent videos on the Matthew Shane trade. As well, please, please, please check out our website, sensetalkcentral.com, as we update it every single day. Of course, click right here for the season playlist, right here for our most recent upload, and right here to subscribe to us. As well, please check out cgiant.ca with the code SENSETALK to help me out, the channel out, and you can go to a Sense game. Thank you all for watching. The Sens defeat the Colorado Avalanche 4-3, and I'll see you tomorrow on November 11th, Remembrance Day, for the Sens versus Avalanche in Stockholm, Sweden. I'll see you then. Sens win 4-3. Go Sens go.